Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Well, I've got to tell you, we are so excited to see this early season snow. You know, we've had just a couple of years of intense drought. And while the drought isn't broke yet, we're going in the right direction finally. Now, today I want to do a little bit different kind of an episode. For those of you who follow the channel, you've kind of followed along as I've set up our gunsmithing shop here and, and gone through some of the schooling and, and whatnot. Today I want to kind of share with you my journey into gunsmithing and, and share with you some experiences, both good and bad, and maybe give you some advice if you're interested in gunsmithing, whether it's just as a hobby or if your long-term goal is to maybe become a full-time gunsmith. So let's head on down to the shop. We'll get near that old fire and uh, talk a little bit about gunsmithing. Now, first off, let's talk about some of the realities of gunsmithing. And a lot of these things are, are what was told to me by experienced smiths when I first started talking about getting into the business. First off, is there's just not a lot of money in general gunsmithing. But there's a tremendous investment in the amount of time that you have to devote and energy to get the skills to become a successful gunsmith. There's also a tremendous expense into setting up to be a full service gunsmith and all the equipment and tooling it and, and whatnot. Um, and on top of that, there, the regulatory environment is just getting worse and worse and worse. The red tape, the nonsense, the more and more gun control that's affecting the gunsmiths. And a lot of the gunsmiths, old timers are giving it up just because of the frustration with that alone. Now, I know it probably sounds like I'm trying to discourage people from getting into gunsmithing. Not at all. If there's one thing I've learned through this experience is there is a tremendous need for more gunsmiths. There's a shortage of smiths. If you've ever ha had to try to get a gun worked on lately, most of the smiths I know are at least three or four months behind on work. I'm further out than that. Um, there's just a lot of work out there and, and not enough people to do it. But if you really want to get into gunsmithing, get into it with your eyes wide open. Now, if I haven't scared you off yet, stick around and we'll talk a little bit about my path to gunsmithing, um, how it may differ from others, and how if you want to get into it, either as a hobby or a business, um, there are, are different paths depending on, on your situation that can get you there. Now, my path to, to getting the education or the skills that I needed to become a gunsmith is kind of a hybrid one. You see, I've been a, a rancher and a logger, and we even had a sawmill in operation based here on the ranch for years and years, so I had to be pretty good at fixing things and making them run out of necessity. Um, and, of course, we're, we're gun collectors here. We've got a lot, of, a lot of firearms, and some of those need some tinkering, and I've always enjoyed tinkering on those. But I didn't have the skills to go beyond just tinkering. So I started taking some... NRA summer courses at the Lassen College Gunsmithing School down in Susanville. And that's, it's about three or four hour drive from here, so it's not too bad to go down and take a one or two week course during the summer to get some more skills for, for some more advanced tinkering, shall we say. Now, a few years ago we made the decision because there isn't a next generation that's interested in ranching here to take over the ranch that we would lease out the ranch, or at least a big portion of it. And I found myself with something I hadn't had in decades, and that's quite a bit of free time. So I made the decision to go down to the school on a full-time basis. And so the, the Lassen College gunsmithing program is, is a two-year program. And the first year is really focused on things like uh, machining, uh, some of the finishing, bluing, case color hardening, those kind of things. Um, tool building uh, and, and, and the process of building tools, you're honing your skills as a machinist. Really valuable hands-on stuff. And the second year of the program is about uh, the function and repair of different types of firearms. Say you spend a, a week on um, pump-action shotguns, a week on this type of pistol, a week on um, uh, bolt action rifles, you know, just that kind of thing. So really for me, I always knew that I wanted to focus my efforts on vintage lever action rifles, Colt Lightning rifles, early revolvers, those kind of things. So the second year would have been a lot of extra expense and time for me to learn 
a lot of weapon systems that I don't intend to work on. So I never really intended to go for the second year. Now, this all took place during the COVID crisis, and, and during that first year, uh, I, I ended up getting COVID and, and couldn't go back. And of course, you were kind of treated like a leper if, if you got COVID at that time. And we got through most of it, but um, didn't really intend to go back that second year. So instead, I bought one of the online courses or video courses. In this case, it was the AGI course to get the second year stuff or at least a, a, a uh, uh, resource for the second year stuff. Now, Interestingly enough, the, the fellow that teaches most of those, those courses on AGI, Bob Dunlap, was the head instructor at Susanville for 30 years, and he's the one that set up all the courses at, at the Susanville School. So basically, his courses on AGI for repairing the firearms are the exact same courses that would have taken in person down at the school. So I went through and, and did some of the traditional schooling first, then some of the video courses secondly, and then the third component for my education, and this is a, a universal truth with gunsmithing, is that there's no substitute for experience, whether it's your own or somebody else's. So I, I've got a couple of dear friends who are semi-retired gunsmiths. One um, uh, specializes in Colt Lightning rifles, among other things. Another who is probably one of the world's best uh, and knowledgeable restorers of Winchester rifles. So I, I'm able to rely on, on that resource, having, having those, those folks to rely on when I have questions. I, I try to spend as much time with them in their shops as possible, although each of them lives quite a, quite a ways from me, so I don't get there as much as I would like to. But seeking out um, help from some experienced people has been tremendous. I, in, in some ways, I've learned far more from them than I ever did in gunsmith school or by any videos that I've, I've, I've watched over the years. Now, here's another universal truth about gunsmithing. You never stop learning. And now that you've heard the path that I took to getting the education I need to just get started in gunsmithing, let me give you some kind of suggestions um, for how you might get started. You know, gunsmithing school may not be for everybody. If you have a couple of years of your life and the financial resources to go to a gunsmithing school, it's not a bad way to go. If you can go to some of those NRA summer courses, that's a great way to kind of get started and see if it's, it's for you. Unfortunately, I think there's only four of the schools across the country that, that offer those courses. Um, the video courses, while I did really learn a lot from Bob Dunlap's courses with AGI, uh, Bob was just an incredible gunsmith and a, an incredible instructor. There are a lot of those courses that I don't think they lend themselves very well to learning, um, particularly the hands-on kind of stuff, the machine shop courses. Um, I really think you, you need to go and get hands-on learning on the machine shop courses. Le learn how to run a lathe. Learn how to run a mill. You can see it in a video, but until you actually have somebody there that understands it and can teach it to you and you do it um, in front of them and, and do it yourself, you're just not going to get the, the um, education you need. And, and so, you know, a lot of, lot of community colleges, if you've got one in your area that, that offers some machine shop courses, that's not a bad way to get started. A lot of gunsmiths start out as machinists because machining skills are so incredibly valuable to uh, being able to do the kind of work that we need to do as, as gunsmiths. And of course, there's a whole lot above and beyond just machine work, but that's kind of the foundation of, of a lot of what we do as gunsmiths. Now, for me, I didn't have this option because of where we're at, but I think one of the very best things you can do is to apprentice with a, an existing gunsmith. If, if that option's available to you, even if you go to their shop in your spare time and volunteer to sweep the floor and show them you're a serious person about it, um, you know, that the, I think one of the best ways to learn is from people who've been doing it for years. Remember I said there's no substitute for experience and that's one of the best ways is to, to befriend somebody who's a, an existing gunsmith and, and learn from them. A lot of gunsmiths are a little bit leery of that, so you, it may take a little bit of time to 
win their trust and, and, and you really need to spend that time with them and convince them that you're a serious person that they don't want some somebody that's not serious in their in their shop wasting their time um, and they're certainly not going to let you touch any guns until they've decided that they can very they can trust you very very much now keep in mind I'm a relative rookie as a gunsmith I've had the shop open and doing this full time for less than two years. But I would share some suggestions for you if, you, if you're interested in getting into gunsmithing. And the first one is, is to specialize. Well, pick a type of firearm that you're, you're really interested in and learn that particular firearm or a group of firearms very well. Don't just take in every firearm that comes in off of the street or every project that, that comes into the shop or somebody contacts you about fixing for them. There are so many different types of firearms out there that no, no gunsmith can know them all and know all the idiosyncrasies and, and the systems involved. So you spend so much time researching and parts shopping and trying to find different parts for these these firearms that come in that you're not familiar with especially in your early days and that's a mistake I made early on so specialize in the, in the types of guns that you're working on and that doesn't mean you can't take a few others that you feel like you, you should either for a neighbor or you know whatever your reasoning but and then if you if you're getting into a kind of on part-time basis specialize on the types of services you offer Say you want to set up initially to blue firearms, get your, your bluing tanks, um, get, get the equipment that it takes to, to do some polishing and those type of things, and just start ref refinishing firearms for people. You can always expand on the services that you offer as time goes on. Or a, another great way to get started um, is to offer a service that doesn't require a federal firearms license. Say checkering stocks. So you require people to bring in just the, the stock and not the whole gun because you have to have a federal firearms license if that firearm stays overnight in your shop. But you don't have to if just particular parts of it and then particularly not the receiver come into the shop for work. So checkering stocks or refinishing stocks that aren't on the firearm is a great way to get started and you don't have to go through all the um, hassle and, and red tape of getting an FFL and all the record keeping that goes along with that. So this is, these are kind of ways that, that a person can get, get started into gunsmithing and then work into it um, more fully as you gain experience and start gaining and expanding the equipment and, and able to offer more types of services. Now this is where a big share of the work takes place in a gunsmith shop, right here on the gunsmith benches. And there's a variety of small tools, hand tools, screwdrivers, files, uh, stones, Fordham tool. Uh, but we're not going to go into all the different types of tools it takes to, to gunsmith. Um, maybe we'll do an episode on that in the future, the, the tools that are required and how to set up your shop properly. But I've seen some other pretty good episodes out there on YouTube, so you can check those out in the interim. But let's take a little bit of a tour and just look at some of the major pieces of equipment uh, that are required to open up a full service type gun shop. Now this little tour is basically to show you kind of the bare bones equipment you need to have a full service gunsmithing shop. We'll start off with the mill. Now you don't have to have a big fancy mill like this one. In fact the very best gunsmith I know uses just a little bench top mill and I'd trade this mill for his skill level with his any day of the week. Now the other thing you need to go along with your mill and sometimes it's pretty easy to get uh, more money tied up in in the tooling as you as you do in the whole mill and so you have to have the tooling to go along with the mill and a lot of the projects that come along um, mean that you have to go out and get some more tooling to, to do that project, especially when you're first getting started. So there's a significant expense in, in tooling and, and knowing what tooling you need. Now in this part of the shop we've got our blast cabinet over here. We've, we've got our welders over here. Our, our really our important one here is our, our TIG welder. And if you don't have a TIG welder or, the, or TIG welding skills, you can get away with oxyacetylene welding. Um, that's what was used for years and years. Um, but you, you really, if you're going to gunsmith, you're going to be able to have to 
have the skills to weld on, on gun parts. Of course, we've got our barrel vise here. Now, this one I, I made myself, so we didn't have to go out and buy it. Got a lot of different hand tools, like our action wrench here. This one made down at gunsmithing school. Now, let's head on over to the other part of the shop and check out the lathes. That's really kind of the heart of the operation. Now, over here, we've got our lathes. And I've had this old Enco lathe for several years. It's a 12 by 36, and I still use it quite a little bit for polishing and some threading work and whatnot. But really, lathes are, are so critical to gunsmithing. I did go out and buy this new Grizzly lathe when I started in gunsmithing professionally. Um, really a, a nice setup, has a digital readout and, and all that. Set up particularly for gunsmithing, it's a, a 13 by 40. If I had it to do over again, I'm not sure I wouldn't work a little harder at finding a an older American machine that was still in good shape, um, but those are kind of hard to find. Over here we're getting into cover case hardening, and of course this isn't a requirement for general gunsmithing, but um, we've got a kiln set up here that we're, we'll be using for cover case hardening. We've also got a smaller heat treat kiln that we use for um, like tempering springs and that kind of thing. And, and if you're going to gunsmith, you're probably going to need to have um, some kind of a kiln for, for heat treating. Now here are our brewing tanks. These are out behind the shop so that we don't have all the, the nasty fumes that come off of our brewing operation in the shop. Um, these are obviously were closed down for the winter on bluing. But eventually we'd like to wall off an area in the shop and uh, set up an exhaust system to pull those fumes out. But until we do, this is going to be their home. Now there's one other source of good information about gunsmithing, and that's YouTube videos. Now, I'll admit, there's some bad ones you might have to wade through to get to the good ones, and hopefully you think that Cinnabar guy makes some good ones. But there are some good episodes out there, some good uh, gunsmiths that are willing to share their information, their knowledge with you on those videos. So find some good ones that you like and, and study up there. Now, thanks for joining us today. I hope uh, this has been valuable for anybody who's considering a career as a gunsmith or even just wants to learn more about gunsmithing as a hobby. Don't do like I did and, and sit on the fence thinking about it for years. There's no time like the present. Just get out and start on it. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.